Wineberry is a multi-stem deciduous shrub that's invasive to our lower Hudson Prism region that can grow to be about six feet tall. It's a member of the rose family, also known as, and is also known as wine raspberry or Japanese wineberry. Its thorny stems are covered in fine reddish hairs, which help distinguish it from some of our native raspberries or blackberries. It also has these bright red, shiny raspberry-like fruit that are apparent in midsummer. Um, that is also another distinguishing key ID feature, which we'll talk about later. In terms of its history of introduction, it's native to China and Japan and Korea, and was introduced in 1890 as rootstock for cultivated raspberries. It's very durable and reliable with bright red coloration, which also made it a popular ornamental berry yielding plant and is still actually used today by berry breeders. But unfortunately, it has escaped from just cultivation for uh, berry producing purposes. And it's really starting to impact our, our forest habitats and native plants. It's now extant in at least 24 states. And as you can see here, you know, people like it. It's a very delicious berry, it can be used in baking. And so unfortunately, as it gets out, it's starting to disrupt uh, ecosystem processes. In terms of its ecology, habitat, and impacts, it occurs along forest, stream, and wetland edges, and open forests as well, and particularly in moist soils. Uh, however, it's also been reported on cliff faces and rocky summits under varying light levels, so certainly uh, is able to adapt to a wide variety of environmental conditions. It can form dense, shady thickets and displace native plants and alter habitat. Um, in fact, a study in Inwood Hill Park in our prism region uh, found consistently higher densities of wineberry than blackberry or black raspberry when found together. And studies in Maryland suggested that it grew to the exclusion of strawberries. So certainly wineberry has the ability to limit regeneration of forests, pastures, and even croplands. It's also host to a series of uh, several, you know, several viruses that can affect our native raspberries like raspberry yellow spot. So it's a harborer of viruses that can transfer to some of our native plants as well. In terms of its region, reasons for invasion successes, it's got a higher photosynthetic rate than a lot of the natives that it's competing with. It's got a greater phenoplasti phenotypic plasticity. And basically what that means is an ability to change form um, in, in response to different environmental stimuli and whether that's uh, you know, just different types of morphologies or physiologies that make it uh, a better competitor than some of the uh, native plants that it's competing with. It's got a uh, high resource use efficiency and certainly a uh, prolific seed production. Its seeds, uh, because they are delicious and, and available, uh, they're dispersed by birds, mammals, reptiles. We already mentioned humans as consuming them. Uh, the, the wineberry can reproduce clonally via cane rooting and layering. It's uh, self-fertile and through cane rooting and layering can, can really start to spread, you know, as, as soon as that touches the ground. The canes touch the ground, it is capable of, um, of reproducing on its own, and individuals can produce thousands of viable seeds per year, and so it can tend to spread in dense thickets uh, right next to itself uh, because of these reproductive properties and also get dispersed by um, various animals. Um, it also has longer first years of growth. Uh, in fact, it's 32% uh, longer growing season than black and red raspberries, uh, according to a few studies. In terms of its key ID features, as you can see in this top picture here, it has three leaflets per compound leaf. And you can see that it's got this white underside. The leaves uh, are, tend to be very fuzzy uh, with tooth margins on them. Uh, that is relative to some of the, the blackberries, for example, typically have five leaflets on them. Um, so that's just one um, key distinguishing characteristic. The bright red, uh, ruby red berries will ripen in June and July in our prism region. But really, if you were to look at one feature that distinguishes it from the blackberries and red red raspberries, it's really the, the kind of these fuzzy stems and branches that it has uh, that are absent in a lot of the, uh, in blackberries and raspberries in our, in our area. So really be looking for these fine reddish hairs along the branches and stems. And you might even see those hairs in and around the berries as well, depending on what part of the season that you're in. 
And certainly if you are looking for uh, more detail and key ID features, be sure to check out our field identification video, which will look at some of the variations you might find in nature and look at some um, native lookalikes in ways um, that you can tell what it is out in um, its naturalized setting.